We continue tracking another story. A mother and father from Jupiter accused of the unthinkable making their first appearance in court. And we're learning the mom was a local teacher. Investigators say the couple kept their adopted son in an 8x8 eight eight structure in the family's garage with nothing but a mattress and a bucket to relieve himself. This was allegedly happening in the very family-oriented neighborhood of Egret Landing in Jupiter, right across the street from Jupiter First Church and St. Peter's Catholic Church. Tonight we have live team coverage. Al Pefley has neighborhood reaction, but we begin with CBS 12's Lexi Nall, who's been looking into documents from police about this investigation and the shocking new details. Lexi? Yeah, Liz, the report details physical, mental, and emotional abuse that this teenage boy endured in his family's garage. And we must warn you that some viewers might find some of the details he told investigators very disturbing. Really aggressive physical discipline is one way a 13-year-old Jupiter boy describes what he endured at home. The child was adopted by Timothy and Tracy Ferreter. According to new documents obtained by CBS 12, Tracy reported the boy missing last month. And when investigators went to search for clues as to his whereabouts, they discovered a small structure in the family's garage with a deadbolt and doorknob only accessible on the outside. Inside, a bucket, a mattress, and a ring camera. Police found the boy at school shortly after he was reported missing, and the child pleaded with investigators to arrest him, saying he would rather be in prison than back at home. The child telling investigators that when he's not at school, he's kept locked in that shack, separated from the other children in the home, sometimes for 18 hours at a time. He says he was frequently hit with a belt, spit on, and made to relieve himself in a bucket, which he had to clean by himself. The teen also told investigators he was not allowed to eat with the rest of the family, but was delivered leftovers to the garage after mealtime. Investigators executed a search warrant of the ring camera inside the structure and were able to corroborate much of the child's story with thousands of videos showing physical and emotional abuse. The ferreters were arrested for aggravated child abuse and false imprisonment. I think they're a danger to all minors in the community. On Wednesday morning, a judge set bond for each of the parents at 50000 and ordered them to have no contact with any of their children. Details within the documents also reveal that the teen might have been subjected to similar abuse when they lived in Arizona four years ago. A neighbor there telling investigators she noticed that the ferreters kept a creepy room locked from the outside. Now, I was emailing briefly with an attorney for the Ferreters today, and she told me in a statement that investigators ignored, quote, critical evidence in this case. She didn't elaborate much, but we do have that full statement available for you to view on our website. That's CBS12.com. Liz, Jim, back to you. Lexi, did anyone ever contact police that something strange was going on in that home? Maybe a neighbor who saw the boy cleaning out that bucket in the backyard, or did a teacher suspect abuse? Actually, Liz, the man who was hired to construct this structure that this young boy was living in made a call to police back in December. According to these documents we read, you know, the man found it a little bit fishy that he was asked to create this structure that locked from the outside. He was concerned and gave police that information. It looks like nothing really came of it at the time, but we can assume that police were able to connect the dots when they were called back to that house for this missing person case. And maybe that's why they were so insistent on going in and searching the premises. A mother and father from Jupiter accused of the unthinkable make their first appearance in court today. Investigators say the couple kept their adopted son in an 8x8 eight eight structure in the family's garage with nothing but a mattress and a bucket to relieve himself. This was allegedly happening in the very family-oriented neighborhood of Egret Landing in Jupiter, right across the street from Jupiter First Church and St. Peter's Catholic Church. Tonight we have live team coverage beginning with our Lexi Nall. She's been looking into some of the disturbing new details from police. Jim, the report details physical and emotional abuse that this teenage boy endured in his family's garage. And we must warn you, some of the things he told investigators some viewers might find disturbing. Really aggressive physical discipline is one way a 13-year-old Jupiter boy describes what he endured at home. The child was adopted by Timothy and Tracy Ferreter. According to new documents obtained by CBS 12, Tracy reported the boy missing last month, and when investigators went to search for clues as to his whereabouts, they discovered a small structure in the family's garage with a deadbolt and doorknob only accessible on the outside. 
Inside, a bucket, a mattress, and a ring camera. Police found the boy at school shortly after he was reported missing, and the child pleaded with investigators to arrest him, saying he would rather be in prison than back at home. The child telling investigators that when he's not at school, he's kept locked in that shack, separated from the other children in the home, sometimes for 18 hours at a time. He says he was frequently hit with a belt, spit on, and made to relieve himself in a bucket, which he had to clean by himself. The teen also told investigators he was not allowed to eat with the rest of the family, but was delivered leftovers to the garage after mealtime. Investigators executed a search warrant of the ring camera inside the structure and were able to corroborate much of the child's story with thousands of videos showing physical and emotional abuse. The ferreters were arrested for aggravated child abuse and false imprisonment. I think they're a danger to all minors in the community. On Wednesday morning, a judge set bond for each of the parents at $50,000 and ordered them to have no contact with any of their children. Details within the documents also reveal that the teen might have been subjected to similar abuse when they lived in Arizona four years ago. A neighbor there telling investigators she noticed that the ferreters kept a creepy room locked from the outside. And an attorney for the Federers told me in an email today that investigators ignored critical evidence in this case. Now, she didn't elaborate too, too much more, but you can read her full statement. That's available on our website, CBS12.com. For now, reporting live in Jupiter, I'm Lexi Nall, CBS12 News. Now, neighbors say the accusations involving this Jupiter couple are really hard to believe. Yeah, they live in Egret Landing neighborhood. It's filled with families and kids. Normally, they're talking about school and the weather, but not tonight. CBS 12's Al Pefley continues our team coverage. He's live outside the couple's home in Jupiter. Al? Jim, this is the home here in Jupiter where police say Timothy and Tracy Ferreter were keeping their 13-year-old son in a box in their garage. And according to the arrest report, they had given him an orange Home Depot bucket like this one to use as a bathroom when he was in the box. Neighbors are shaking their heads in disbelief. It's horrible. It's one of the most messed up things I've ever heard. And the fact that it was like right there is to me, it's just crazy, you know. Tyler Stiefel is just a couple of doors down the street from Timothy and Tracy Ferreter. They're charged with aggravated child abuse for allegedly keeping their 13-year-old adopted child confined in an 8-foot by 8-foot box in their garage. It's crazy. I I, I didn't know them, really. They were kind of odd, I always thought, a little bit. But I I wouldn't have thought anything like that. I never heard anything like that before. That's that's crazy. I had only had, like, one or two interactions with them, just kind of, like, religious, like, a little bit weird religiously, like, religious kind of crazy. Another neighbor says the Ferreters just moved into the house in December. It's just, just beyond comprehension. I think it's absolutely just horrendous. It's, it's, it's beyond, you know, anything that you could fathom. None of the neighbors we spoke with had ever seen the box in the garage that police say the couple kept their son in. The idea of, of entrapping or ca- capturing a human and caging them like that is, is bizarre. Tim Drappy, a neighbor who lives a block away, says he's also a parent and has a 13-year-old son the same age as the child that police say was abused. I think that it's a, you gotta have something messed up in your head to be able to to do that to a human. Another neighbor, Sylvia Reinhardt, a retired teacher with 45 years teaching experience, finds the allegations disturbing. My biggest concern is that this could exist in what we consider a quiet neighborhood. It's a horrible thing to happen to any child. And I'm wondering what would force parents to do something like that. I really have no idea. And another neighbor says for parents to treat a child like this is unthinkable. He says they moved to this neighborhood a few weeks ago because they felt it was a good, safe area. And he says allegations like this are so horrific It seems out of character for Jupiter. Good evening, everyone. I'm Liz Kidantas. I'm Jim Grimes. We have a lot to get to tonight. There are two major developing stories that we're closely following. Our first big story has to do with that house of horrors in Jupiter we first told you about last night. We're talking about the Jupiter parents arrested for allegedly locking their son in a box in the garage. 
Now we're learning so many more details about how they were able to keep things secret for so long. The red flags that may have been missed all along the way, and it's all outlined in some disturbing new police reports. I dove into those do uh, documents myself, and the details are pretty hard to stomach. I'm going to break those down for you in just a minute. But first, CBS 12's Luli Ortiz joins us outside their home in Jupiter. And Luli, are the parents still in jail? Well, Liz, we just learned minutes ago that the father, Timothy, was released on bond. His wife, Tracy, bonded out of jail a few hours ago, and that's why we were here for several hours this evening and still no signs of Tracy, both of them facing serious charges, including aggravated child abuse. And according to this report right here, detectives also learned that this abuse happened for years, possibly out of state. Tracy and Timothy Federer made their first appearance this morning. The parents, both 46, are accused of locking their adopted son inside an 8 by 8 structure in the family's garage, separated from the other children in the home for hours at a time with only a mattress and a bucket to use as a bathroom. During the investigation, detectives discovered a ring camera also inside the tiny room, which they were able to confirm the team's story. Thousands of videos showing physical and emotional abuse. According to documents, the teen told investigators he was also abused in Arizona. Public records show that this is where the family lived in Tucson for a few years up until late December. That's when they moved back to Jupiter in the Egret Landings neighborhood. Palm Beach County psychologist Dr. Rachel Needle specializes in trauma and abuse. Many people with prolonged history of abuse, you know, do have successful and healthy relationships when they're older, but the sooner that he, you know, the person can get some help, the better. Dr. Needle says this abuse can cause victims to feel isolated, fear and distress, which then can lead to psychological consequences of educational difficulties, low self-esteem and depression. Especially when that trust was broken from such an early age by the people that you're supposed to be able to feel the safest with and be able to trust the most, which are your caregivers. Therapy can be effective in helping people that have experienced prolonged you know, child abuse. An attorney for the Federers implied to the judge today the teen had behavioral disorders, something the mother also told investigators at one point, suggesting that might be a reason the teen was locked up. If you see something, say something. You see changes in their behavior, um, even how they're dressing, acting, um, their mood. Make sure that, that you speak up. Now, All Saints Catholic School here in Palm Beach County tell CBS 12 News that the mother, Tracy, worked as a former aide at the school sometime between March of 2014 and 2017.